Welcome back folks, MTG Joe here. This weekend is the Explore Best of One Qualifier Play-In. Uh, so we have a video up for the best decks if you want to check that out. When we were looking at the best decks, we actually came across this one deck uh, from an individual, Koitaro. Uh, went 17 and 2 with it. It's a green-white auras deck. Uh, so something that we don't see too often in the best of one format, let alone in the Explore format. So I thought we would try it out today and see how it plays out. Hopping over, here I am, and here's the deck. So I'd have it split up between creatures and the auras so it gets a better way to see. A kind of cool thing, just type T and then dash creatures, and you can kind of separate it like that. Helps you see in that regard. Uh, so I have my 20 qualifier play in points up here. So we are going to be playing the event, deciding if I want to do best of three or best of one. So we're going to find try out a couple of the best of one decks. I'm going to do a quick uh deck demo of the decks, probably three, four videos of the deck. I'm going to cut it up, but then I will share all the stats uh, at the end. So there'll be a wrap up. So stay tuned to the end. Uh, I'll give you a full kind of synopsis on how I thought the deck went and a summary of all the games if we play a little bit more than that. Uh, but the core of the deck, we are put it, getting creatures and putting auras on them. So we have Scrawl for protection. Generous Visitor gets bigger as you cast more auras. You can put counters on either itself or other creatures. Toadstool and Mire is a kind of a sweet one from Eldrain. One mana, one one. Ward two. So Fixed Hexproof, we don't really have um, the Slippery Boggle effects in this. Uh, there's a one in Pioneer that's Hexproof. We don't have it here. It's also a Mana Sync, we could put the Mana into it later. Uh, we have Light Pods as a way then we can get other uh, auras from it, so it kind of tutors for you. And then we have Shram as a way to get uh, card advantage when we cast the auras. Looking at the auras themselves, we have Cartouche, gives First Strike and another body. Ethereal Armor scales for the number of enchantments you have and gives first strike. Griff Boom is flying. Sentinel's Eyes, Vigilance, and a power boost. Kai's Ghost Form. While we can't cast it, it is something we can fetch off of the Light Paws. Uh, we have Audacity for Trample as well as Power Boost. Six Sense as card advantage. All that glitters for Power Boost, similar to basically just copy five of Ethereal Armor. Rune of Substance as Lifelink. And then Warbriar's Blessing as a fight effect. Um, so we have kind of that thing. Uh, the only thing I did was I added Jengantha Companion because it's free to play. Uh, that was one thing that they missed. So I uh, might as well play it in best of one. The one thing we need to see, though, we need to see if we have the cool art. Do I have the cool art? We don't have the cool art. So we're playing the regular art. <laughs> so we'll give this a go and see how it plays. So I will see you in the games and we'll catch you next. We'll catch you for the review at the end. Thanks for watching. Jumping into some gameplay. Platter reset. So we are in platinum. So we have protection effect and we have light pause and we go first. This hand looking promising so far. Again, we're going to do a cut of a couple games showing the deck performing. Um, but I will share all the stats and a full analysis at the end of how I thought the deck played out. So, trying to do a little bit more truncated, cutting out the dead time to see how the gameplay works out. But at the same time, I want to provide a true form. So all my stats are always available in my tap to try to keep it all in true. As clear as possible. So this could be Jund Oven, maybe? Not sure. Interesting uh, configuration. We're going to start with Kaya's Ghost Form here. We'll go Griff's Boom. And we'll get probably six cents since we have. A bunch of light paws in hand that aren't doing anything. Sentinel size, a nice one. We can get another ethereal armor and just kind of run through there. No clue what opponent's on, but that's fine with us. Keeping this cheaper ones. Target opponent sacrifices the highest. The things I wasn't planning on playing around today. 
So like literally the only way that they kind of get us pillage the bog. I wonder if this is like a scape shift style deck. That's fine. So Griff Spoon, you can return it from the graveyard. That's why we got the Eyes Ghost Form first. So we have all that glitters here. They do need two removal spells. Is Niv to Light? But Niv to Light wouldn't play Riveteer's Charm since you can't hit it off Niv. We'll play that, play this. Probably get the armor here. And ball them. We are soft to removal now. However, we can get a card draw. So they have Leyline Binding here. Could be Niv. Fields down for a turn. Larion would be like the worst. Felix there. I think we're going to do this. And I'm just going to get the audacity here. The double helix also just incidentally gaining them six life. Pretty good for them. They don't have blue mana. Preemptively here. There's Iron Scorn. Process a card. Visitor is pretty nice here. One. Two. Three. Just use our mana this turn. So it's likely Niv. Again, they're going to need a couple pieces of removal here. Omnath, a nice one. I think we pump up a couple. Get it, so this could potentially attack in. Now we just kind of go wide. So they're forced to block, which is nice. And unless they have Supreme Verdict, Clarion doesn't get it. They did have triple Lightning Helix here. Got him on the board. Catch you in the next one. All right, jumping into another one. Love Shack, thank you.
and looks good. Now the annoying thing, just because these are pathways, doesn't allow us to double spell this turn. So something to consider there. Um, I do think we keep. I'm gonna lead on Toadstool. And then I think I lead on Skrell, depending on what they play. Blue white control. That's the case. I think we do this. And then either I lead on Sentinel's Eye or Audacity, probably do this. Because it's going to be a ways before they have enough with, I guess, March, but then they still have to pay the ward. Ooh. Rona combo. Okay, so something different. That this is not legal in this format. Could be Slogurk. Double smack face here. This is a nice thing with Toadstool. It's kind of got built-in protect. It gives you kind of like a two-turn window when you can start doing your stuff. Was oh, this Grease Fang? Okay, they can't produce black mana. Yeah, they can make the boat, but the boat doesn't kill me. Did you get Parhelion? Pretty, like, cool setup by them. I don't think this is as consistent. Okay, so boat comes, boat shoots, visitor, and they're dead. So, a lot of flash, no pizzazz. Take that and uh, catch you in the next one. Keeping the gameplay going, we're hopping into another one. We got Skrulls, we got Toadstools, I think we keep. I'm going to lead on Toadstool, then we're going to cartouche it, and we're going to play Skrull. No Thoughtsies, no Thoughtsies. I said don't Thoughtsies! Opponent wasn't listening. We told him no Thoughtsies. Tangot went from reasonable to super susceptible. Well, that was a fantastic draw. See Fatal Push. Give us a window. Actually don't care about get go blank. This is Waste Knot. I, I'm preferring the protection. Got more utility to me. See what we draw here. Stop drawing ghost form. I do think we want um, Mana Confluence or even just a Black Fast Land somewhere in there. Had a lot of go blanks. Which I got in hand. Just discard fodder if they have something like Lily. The one thing is if they have Shieldred, I can kind of go through a Shieldred. Sure. Then out our deck. One basic worth noting. They're doing this to fix their mana. I'm going to differentiate my threats here. Let's turn. 
Maybe it was right to hold the guy a reach, but we'll see what happens here. They can target a card in their graveyard. So they duress here. That goes into exile. They don't have the mana. You don't have the mana, you die. So even against a couple pieces of interaction, double go blank, we are able to take it down. So on there, more gameplay coming at you. The bizarre is our opponent. We go first, we will keep those hands a little light, but if we can light pause and then follow it up with generous, generous visitor. Mono green devotion, perhaps. We like to see forests. Forests don't interact with our board, which is nice. Yeah, mono green devotion. Very slow start from them. So the Skrelv's probably something we can attack with this game. I think this turn, just because I want to start getting boosts. Probably, so I could six cents for more cards. Which doesn't seem bad, or I can just ethereal armor. Well, opponent just decided that was enough, so we'll take that. Another victory on the board. Jumping into another game, playing Captain Matt. And unplayable. One land would have been great, but I think we mull. All right, we're going to try this one. We're going to hope opponent doesn't have a piece of removal. Malia. I know where elf. What an Abzan or Elgari are you on? Oh, vampire combo. White rigging vampires. Don't have fatal push. Don't have fatal push. That's fine. That's not a fatal push. Atlanta War. They are on just Elf Ron. Do this. Do this. I want to have a second body around. Then do this just so we can get through the trample damage. This allows us to attack into Vein Ripper as well, pretty profitably. But a Ripper into Ripper works. So they hard cast Ripper, and now they'll be able to find another card. Which is a tad annoying. I mean, turn three, hard cast Ripper is pretty solid. Into a Pugnacious Hammer Skull. So this turn, actually interesting, because I can a Ganjo for one with the light pause, depending on how they block. I can light pause, but I kind of want to get Skrelv to get around the blocker. They can attack in for big chunk of damage I think we're just actually light pausing here doing this
take action here. Put all that glitters. So like they can double block here. I'm wondering if it's even worth it. Probably is all said and done. They take out at least one of the big bodies. They're just soaking up the damage. That's probably the best case for us. Do a lot of lands, which isn't great. The second rigging coming down, so this could find him something else pretty big. Thorn for lifelink, but the timing wouldn't work out because they wouldn't be able to uh, plus it because it happens in combat already. First strike being a very valuable keyword right now. Rig rig. Second vein ripper. See a nine ball come through. A chunk of damage there. So depending on how they block here, Just dead. The fatal push. Ah, fortunate because that was our life gain as well. And we take the four damage, so they kind of got us that way. Just very good sequence. We needed like a card main phase to be able to search up the second trample. Now that since they have double vein ripper, just the, the damage was too much. Um, yeah, they got us. They got us. So wrap up time. We went four and six with the deck. Um, I think it's super fragile. The thing that I had the same concerns with with the historic auras deck, you're very reliant on having a creature going and having it survive. The format has a lot of fatal push decks, a lot of thoughtseize decks, a lot of red based aggro decks. Um, against the Heroic deck, which has just kind of cheaper interaction, gets faster going, has haste, was a little stronger. Uh, you can get have them go over the top of you. Amalia combo was very rough. We had two games where they just kind of turn three, comboed us, and had no interaction to it. The Wizards matchup just has a ton of cheap burn that can hurt you. The matchups where we had Skrelv alive, and on, if we Skrelved on one and kept it alive, it was a lot more impactful. That said, I think I would probably, if you want to go with this deck, get rid of the Generous Visitors, play uh, the Dog, Selfless Savior, and then cut down a Skrelv and play a third uh, Shram. I think that's the way you got to go. It's really about protecting, but it was really rough into some of the matchups. We mulliganed a lot. Um, there was a couple games where it just your choice was mulligan to four or five or keep a somewhat risky hand that hope they didn't have removal or thought on one um so kind of where i'm at like we almost were like 50 percent but you know one win in either direction got a little lucky here or there i think it's fine for the latter I i'm not planning on taking this to the event after playing the games but let me know what you think of this truncated format not showing all the games but just kind of the highlighted ones and uh we'll take it from there thanks for watching